Hey, second grade. So we have been working on learning 2D shapes this week, all the way up to 12-sided figures. And we've also been working on the between math fact strategy for the month of November. Today, we're gonna to work on that math fact strategy, a word problem of the day. And then we're going to review our 2D shapes that we learned and learn how you can compose those shapes using other shapes. So I'll show you how to do that in just a little bit. Let's get started on our between math fact strategy first. Okay, so here are some math facts that I have and we're going to practice using the between fact strategy on them. So remember to use the between fact strategy, the two numbers have to have one number that comes in between them on the number line. So your two add-ins have to have a number that would be in between them in order for it to work. So six and eight have one number that is between them. What number is that? They have the number seven between them on the number line. So you just have to double seven. What is seven plus seven? Seven plus seven is 14. Six plus eight is 14. All right, 10 and 12. What number comes between 10 and 12? 10 plus 12, what number comes in between 10 and 12? 11 comes in between 10 and 12. So what is 11 plus 11? If you don't know that double, 11 plus 11 is 22. So 10 plus 12 is 22. Last one, three plus five. What number comes in between three and five on the number line? The number four. So what is four plus four? Four plus four is eight. Okay, so that's the between math fact strategy. You just have to find the number in between the two add-ins and double it. All right, let's move on to our word problem of the day. And we are going to use the apps check strategy when we do this problem. Okay, here's our word problem. Kim had 32 sunflowers, 26 roses, and 15 daisies. How many flowers does Kim have in all? All right, let's read it again and listen for the question this time. Kim had 32 sunflowers, 26 roses, and 15 daisies. How many flowers does Kim have in all? What is the question that we're being asked here? How many flowers does Kim have in all? There's the question that we're being asked. Okay, so now let's go back through the word problem and listen for important information that's going to help us to figure out how many flowers Kim has in all. All right, here's the first sentence. Kim had 32 sunflowers, 26 roses, and 15 daisies. Ooh, there was a lot of important information in that first sentence. Kim had 32 sunflowers. Sunflowers are a type of flower. 26 roses. A rose is a flower. She had 26. And 15 daisies. Daisies are also flowers. How many flowers does Kim have in all? Okay, so we have what we need now. All right, now we're going to plan out how we're going to solve this. So if Kim has 32 sunflowers, 26 roses, and 15 daisies, how many um, numbers are we going to have to be working with here? Well, it's asking us in all how many she has. So we're going to have to add to figure that out. And it looks like we have three add-ins. We have 32 sunflowers, 26 roses, in 15 daisies. So if we add those together, we should be able to figure out how many flowers she has in all. If we were to look at a part part whole mat with this, there would actually be three parts, 32, 26, and 15. The whole is going to be however much that equals up to all together. Okay, so now let's get ready to solve this problem. I think to solve this one, I may do, hmm, I think I'm going to do expanded form addition. 
Okay, so what I need to do is expand each number. So 32 is 30 plus 2. 26 is 20 plus 6. And 15 is 10 plus 5. Okay, now I can add these numbers together. So 2 and 6 is, let's see, I'm going to do actually 6 and 2. 6 plus 2 is 8. And then 8 plus 5, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay, so this is 13 here. And then 30 plus 20 plus 10. So 30 plus 20, 30, 40, 50, that's adding 20. And then plus 10 more. 50, 10 more is 60. Okay, so now I need to do 60 plus 13. Ugh, I can expand it out even more now and do 60 plus 13 is 10 plus 3. So 60 plus 10 plus 3. 60 plus 10 is 70, and 70 plus 3 is 73. So I think that 32 plus 26 plus 15 is 73. But we're not done yet because we're going to check it. If this um, way of solving the problem is confusing for you, that's okay because you have lots of other strategies that you can use to solve problems. So if one doesn't work for you, you can try another one. My next way that I'm going to check this problem, I think I'm going to draw base 10 blocks to help me. So 32 base 10 blocks. There's 10, 20, 30, 31, 32, 26, 10, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. And then 15, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And now I just need to count these all together. I'm gonna count my tens first and then my ones. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 6, 70, <laughs> 71, 72, 73. So I checked my answer and I got 73 again. So I know for sure how many flowers does Kim have in all? She has 73 total. All right, let's move back or move on to our 2D shapes. All right. So, we'll just review the names of the 2D shapes. We learned about a circle and how it has zero sides and zero vertices. Triangle, three sides, three vertices. Rectangle, rhombus. Square, pentagon, hexagon, heptagon, octagon, nonagon, decagon, hendecagon, and dodecagon. So we'll review those again tomorrow. Today I'm just going to show you how you can compose new shapes using shapes that we already know. So if I had six triangles, there's four, five, six, what new shape could I make? If I have six triangles, watch, I can make I put them all together. We are composing a new shape here. This shape is, what is that? That's a hexagon, see? We have one, two, three, four, five, six sides and one, two, three, four, five, six vertices. So this is a hexagon made out of six triangles. What if I have four squares? What could I make using four squares? I can compose, if I put them together this way, a rectangle. See, it has two sides that are the same length and two sides that are the same length. Two of them are longer and two of them are shorter. I'm having a hard time putting them all together, but that's a rectangle 
made out of four squares. I could rearrange them like this, and now what do I have? Now I just have a larger square. It's still made out of four smaller squares though. So we're taking shapes and creating new shapes out of them. What if I have three rhombuses? What shape could I compose using three rhombuses? If I put them together like this, what shape do I have? Now I have a hexagon. So you can make a hexagon using three rhombuses. Just like this. Well, if I can turn it right, there we go. So that's a hexagon using three rhombuses. Let's try one more. What if I have a hexagon and three triangles? What shape could I make using a hexagon and three triangles? Watch this. I can put a triangle here and a triangle here and a triangle here. What shape do I have now? A one hexagon and three triangles can come together to make one larger three-sided figure, a larger triangle. Okay, so you can compose new shapes using shapes that you already have and um, that's what we did today. We composed new, two, new 2D shapes using um, all different kinds of shapes. So um, if you have any shapes at home, you can try this at home or when you return to school, you can, can, try, you can try composing new shapes using um, shapes that you already have. Alrighty, I'll see you tomorrow and tomorrow we're gonna work on decomposing shapes. So see you then.